Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A big surprise in the case against Rick Snyder involving the Flint water investigation. You'll find out what his attorneys did today that could change things moving forward. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank, tonight. All right, Hank, also frustration continuing to mount over access to the COVID vaccine. Governor Whitmer unveiling her plan to get the shots moving and also boost the state's economy. But first, breaking news, an awful scene in southwest Detroit where a mother and her son were both shot. The mother did not survive. Right now, doctors are trying to save the life of that little 10 year old boy. But tragically too late to save his mother. The shooting happened this afternoon on Downing Street. That's in a neighborhood near Schaefer and Fort. Priya Mann is there live with the latest. Priya. Devin, Kim, good evening. You know, the family says this mom and son were visiting from Ohio. They were here celebrating this mom's 70th, uh, her aunt's 70th birthday. They had a small gathering last night. The mom and son were supposed to drive back home to Ohio today. Instead, they were both shot sitting in their vehicle. The mom passed away and her son was rushed to the hospital. A mom and her 10 year old son were in a white Chevy when a group of men opened fire. It hurts me, it confuses me. It angers me. The 44 year old woman was visiting from Ohio and was on the phone with her brother moments before she was shot. She had called me and she was kind of like, hey, brother, how you doing? What you got up for today? Because I believe they were going to leave out today. He heard the aftermath of the shooting. My nephew started hollering. I didn't hear the shots. I didn't hear any shots, but my nephew like started hollering and he said that he had been shot. The 10 year old boy was injured and rushed to the hospital. His mom died. Detroit police are now looking for four men. The vehicle that we're looking for right now is a black Chrysler 300 with a partial plate of 413. We are interested in locating that vehicle as soon as possible. The family says the victim, known affectionately as Kiki, was planning to head home to Ohio today. She's not from here. This, this is just odd. Yeah, the family thinks this might be a case of mistaken identity. The woman grew up in River Rouge, but has been living in Ohio for years. At this time, Detroit police are still looking for that Chrysler 300 as that 10 year old boy remains in critical condition in the hospital. Reporting live tonight from Southwest Detroit, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. It's just awful. All right, Priya. In the Flint water crisis investigation, the case against Governor Rick Snyder continuing today and his attorneys made a move that surprised many and could change the direction and location of this case. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester live tonight. Hank, today the battle was all about location. Location, location, location. You may remember when this case was filed, it was in Genesee County. That is the county in which Flint is located. Uh, but Rick Snyder's team saying that doesn't work because as this was unfolding, the governor was in Lansing. And if this case gets moved to Lansing, insiders say it could be a big win for Snyder. This is video from this morning. Former Governor Rick Snyder shown briefly in an office during the Zoom court hearing unfolding in Genesee County this morning. Attorneys representing Snyder saying this case should be tossed out of court. Why? Well, they believe it was not even filed in the right county. They charged it in the wrong venue. Uh, at all times during the indictment, Governor Snyder was at his office in uh, at the Romney building in downtown Lansing. Legal expert Neil Rockine agrees with this argument. If the judge grants the motion to dismiss the case for what we call improper venue, or that the case has not been brought in the right court, all the attorney general will do is refile the very same case in the city of Lansing District Court. Getting the case moved out of Flint and to Lansing could benefit Snyder in the future. This is going to be their tactical view. That jurors in Lansing aren't going to be motivated by passion against Snyder. There was also a big debate regarding the evidence collected in this case. Thousands of documents, information that could be critical to this investigation moving forward. The defense is sort of saying, hey, we don't have any of that information yet. And the prosecutor's response so far has been, yeah, but, you know, there's a, mo there's a process to be followed in this case because it's a grand jury. And part of that process involves the defense has to make disclosures. And so there's going to be some arguments over that.
The other case that was playing out today in court via Zoom was the case against Howard Croft. You may remember Croft was the former public works director in the city of Flint when the crisis was exposed. Uh, both cases now uh, moved to February 23rd. That's a giving opportunity for attorneys to work out some logistical issues, but that's also what we can expect this case to move forward. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, back yeah. to you. Okay, Hank, thank you. And just into the Local 4 newsroom tonight, President Trump has released a farewell address on YouTube, and we have a portion of it here. My fellow Americans, four years ago, we launched a great national effort to rebuild our country, to renew its spirit, and to restore the allegiance of this government to its citizens. In short, we embarked on a mission to make America great again for all Americans. As I conclude my term as the 45th President of the United States, I stand before you truly proud of what we have achieved together. We did what we came here to do, and so much more. To serve as your President has been an honor beyond description. Thank you for this extraordinary privilege, and that's what it is, a great privilege and a great honor. President Trump also wished the incoming Biden administration success and called on Americans to unify around their shared values. And we're set to turn our page in that direction just hours to go now until the inauguration of Joe Biden as president of the United States. Security about as tight as it can get. Michigan's governor among those planning to attend the ceremony, which promises to be unlike any other. Jay Gray in D.C. with a closer look at Mr. Biden's plans and the show of force there as well. Hey there, Jay. Hey there, good evening. And for the last week, we've seen the buildup of the security force here and the perimeter grow at places miles outside of the Capitol, now less than 24 hours before the transfer of power here. As the last wave of National Guard troops move into Washington, we now know about a dozen soldiers are moving out. Relieved of duty here after an intense background check, though officials stress at this time they found no guard connection to any extremist groups. Nothing but the truth, so help you guide. I do. With confirmation hearings underway for several key members of his cabinet, President-elect you know, Joe Biden. It's kind of emotional for me. Leaves Delaware for D.C. from a National Guard base named after his late son, Bo. And I'm honored. I'm truly honored to be your next president and commander in chief. And I'll always be a proud son of the state of Delaware. The president-elect and vice president-elect Kamala Harris will pause this evening to honor the more than 400,000 victims of COVID-19 at the Lincoln Reflecting Pool at the end of a national mall filled with flags. The crowds that usually gather for the inaugural kept away now because of the virus and security concerns, though lawmakers from both parties insist the ceremony will go on just like it has for more than 200 years. Tomorrow, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris will be sworn in. We'll have a safe and successful inaugural right here on the west front of the Capitol. Under the watchful eye of a security force that we now know will stay in place in some form through at least the end of the month. Of course, the focus for everyone here right now is tomorrow's ceremony and what the FBI continues to call credible threats of violence here. In Washington, Jay Gray, Local 4. All right, Jay. The death toll from coronavirus in the U.S. has just hit a grim milestone of more than 400,000 people. And now President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris are set to take part in a national ceremony to honor all of those lives that have been lost. And here's a live picture of what's going on right now. 400 columns will be lit in two rows surrounding the reflecting pool at the base of the Lincoln Memorial. That's right. At 530, people and businesses around the country are invited to turn on their lights in a show of national unity 
and Remembrance. There will be uh, performances, including uh, one by Lori Key, who we profiled last yeah. night on the 11 o'clock news. She's a local nurse in Livonia, who uh, her rendition of Amazing Grace went viral. She's going to be performing at this ceremony. The ceremony is expected to continue until about 5.30 or so. It looks like they're maybe running a little bit behind schedule. If you'd like to keep watching this, we're live streaming it on our website. Just go to clickondetroit.com. We'll keep an eye on it as well. Now here in Michigan, the state reporting another 1,738 new cases over the past 24 hours. And in that period of time, 41 more Michigan lives have been lost to the virus. Meanwhile, Washtenaw County had to postpone today's COVID-19 vaccination clinic as well as one partial clinic on Thursday afternoon. The health department is directly contacting those who need to be rescheduled. They had to postpone because they are not receiving enough of the Pfizer vaccine. And a similar situation unfolding in Wayne County. The mayor of Detroit says to show up as planned if you have an appointment scheduled for this week. But they did say the city received fewer doses and a different brand of vaccine than it expected. You probably saw this. The federal government announced they were going to double the number of Pfizer vaccines being sent to states this week. Uh, when they showed up, they didn't. This is what everybody's dealing with. So the state of Michigan had a shortfall, about 50,000 vaccines from what they'd said, which means everybody uh, is having a tough time this week. In Detroit, we expect to get nine to 10,000 this week. We got 6,000. We can work with 6,000, but it is not what we had hoped to try to keep expanding uh, eligibility. Adding to the frustration of many and Governor Whitmer this afternoon rolling out her plan to deal with the pandemic recession. She's looking to the federal government for billions of dollars in funding for a Michigan economic recovery. Business editor uh, Rod Maloney live with a look at her plans, which are massive here, Rod. Yeah, Devin, it's impressive the amount of money that she's looking to spend here. Now, in the Q&A, she was asked about the portion of the economy that she shut down. Uh, she was clear to say that she didn't shut down the whole economy, but there is a large section of it. She calls the place-based economy now, and she says she has a lot of money headed in that direction. My plan is to use this federal funding to scale up vaccine distribution in Michigan and bring us closer to our goal of 50,000 shots in arms per day. The governor looks to spend more than five and a half billion dollars, just over a half a billion coming from the Michigan General and School Aid Funds. She named three initiatives. Michigan Main Street offers grants for restaurants and other face to face businesses. The micro enterprise support initiative is for businesses with nine or fewer employees and the business Acceler and resiliency initiative for tech startups. Good jobs for Michigan is a program the governor needs help from the legislature to provide future funding. Small businesses, she says need all the help they can get. They're working around the clock to stay afloat while trying to keep their communities safe from COVID-19 and they deserve as much support as we can give them. Let's make Michigan the place where people come to restart their businesses. She'll also ask Republican leaders to extend unemployment benefits from the current 20 weeks to 26 weeks. And there's good reason. As Michigan's treasurer, Rachel Eubank says, Michigan's recovery is a long way off. Even with healthy growth, we're looking at a multi-year recovery process. Public health and the economy go together. We will not have a normal economy again until the public health situation is under control. Now, the governor has not gotten along with the legislature and the Senate Majority Leader put out this statement this afternoon, quote, it's good to see Governor Whitmer finally come around and agree to policies and programs advanced by legislative Republicans over the past several months. Unfortunately, this comes after the governor twice vetoed legislation to provide property tax relief to residents and to businesses. And after Governor, the Governor Whitmer vetoed funds to extend unemployment to Michigan workers, Senate Republicans will take a look at what the governor has proposed and see where we can make improvements, end quote. So legislature's out this week. They're back next week. We'll see if they can work any of this out. Reporting live on Auburn Hills, Rod Malone, local. Yeah, their ability to get along is going to say a lot about what happens in Michigan in the new year. All right, Rod. The Detroit Lions could soon have a new head coach as soon as tomorrow, actually. But first, we're getting to know the man in charge of hiring that coach, the team's new general manager, Brad Holmes. Bernie joins us live with a look at Holmes's first day on the job here. Hi, Bernie. 
Hey, Kimberly, he had a press conference, which is still going on in Allen Park, but they feel the Lions do that they have hit a home run with Brad Holmes as their new general manager. He has never been a GM, but as director of college scouting for the Rams, he hit a lot of grand slams. Great players were drafted by Brad Holmes. A short time ago, Holmes said only one thing matters in his world. world. That's the team. There will be no ego in this process. There will be no ego in the culture. And everything is about the team. Bottom line, everything is about the team. We will be extremely collaborative, very intentional, and thorough and diligent in our process to truly earn it. I, I got to tell you, I think everybody wanted to put a helmet on and go out and play. He's a very, very interesting person, very dynamic. I think everybody's going to love listening to him. We'll have much more from Brad Holmes coming up later in sports. Kimberly, back to you. Bernie, we'll see you a little bit later. Thanks a lot. Uh, we've got changes coming to the SAT test ahead, a portion of the exam that is being dropped, and how the pandemic is playing a role in that decision. Plus, getting to know Wayne County's new top cop, we go one-on-one -on -one with Sheriff Raphael Washington as he takes over for his fallen friend, Benny Napoleon.